Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. You may remember around the end of last year, I built myself an Intel 12th gen editing PC because I had the idea of maybe switching to 12th gen for all of our editing needs. Now, since then, I actually switched back to my main Threadripper system. However, since building Claire's PC, I'll put a link in the description to Claire's PC build. I've been using her PC a little bit to do a couple edits on the go, and she's been using it to do all of our TikTok edits and it's been working really, really well. I'm gonna give this another crack. I'm gonna build another 12th gen editing PC. Now this is just a temporary one because I wanna compare it to something and that will be a Threadripper Pro system in a couple days. So I'm gonna build a Threadripper Pro test system to do this kind of video all over again and then we'll do another video where we pit them side by side to see which one is actually going to be better for what I need. And the only reason why I'm thinking about Threadripper Pro right now is because Threadripper Pro 5000 is gonna be available for the DIY market and I should be able to get my hands on one of those CPUs very soon. So before I go through the rigmarole of all that, I wanna build a system that I can use to edit on and test. So what we're gonna to do today, again, build myself another 12th gen editing PC with a bit of a twist. Let's go on a little bit of a journey through some of the parts here. So the motherboard I'm going with is the MSI Z690 Unify. Now, this video isn't sponsored by MSI. These are just the parts that I have available right now. CPU, Core i9-12900K, the M480 Play from MSI as well. This is a two terabyte drive. 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum DDR5 memory. I think I mentioned to you guys a little while ago that my first kit of this RAM died. So Corsair RM8'd it and this is a new kit that works. Also going with the Scythe Fuma 2 Rev B from memory. This cooler will deal with the 12900K quite easily. And because this is an editing PC, it yeah, it's fine. It's gonna work, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, right? Air cooling at 12900K is fine. And then the GPU is the MSI RTX 3090 Ti Gaming X Trio. I want to test this out for video editing as well because I haven't yet. So this is going to be the baseline GPU that I'm going to be using for the Threadripper Pro system that I'm building as well. And I thought you guys might find some of that information interesting. So we're going to share all of that too. So we reviewed the Pop Mini the other day, the Air version of the case. This is the, the Pop Air, the non-XL one. And I decided that instead of me reviewing the case, I'd probably just test out the thermals with this hardware that we've got here and show you guys all that anyway. But I pulled the two fans from the front of the Mini so I can put them at the top so they're all fractal fans. All right, the first thing I like to do is insert the CPU. I mean, it makes the most sense, so. This is slightly different to older Intel sockets where the latching mechanism is kind of reversed. And what you want to do is you just want to line it up. It can be a little bit tricky first time. So just be careful that you don't bend any pins. Give the CPU a little bit of a wiggle like that just to make sure it's making contact. Now these ones I found that it's, it's easier just to push the clip down and most of the time it will just pop up now like the older ones anyway, so. We're good to go. And there is our CPU installed. This actually has one of those kind of clips that we've seen on the ASUS boards. I think MSI did this for most of their Z690 boards as well. So we'll just drop that drive in and it's got that locking mechanism. Actually, it looks like we need to put a screw in it anyway because yeah, the clip's not gonna work. And that's actually something to note is the clips won't always work with every drive if it's got a heat sink on the back. I'm almost certain there'll be a comment with someone saying there is a better way to do that. Well, there probably is, but too bad. That way works. Every time we do a video where we talk about thermal paste, there's always a million people talking about different ways to apply thermal paste. Now, what I found to give the best thermal paste spread for these LGA 1700 CPUs is this method, right? I've done a lot of builds and this method here works the best. Now it's not too little, it's not too much. As I always say with thermal paste, too much is fine, but not enough is a problem. That's just how thermal paste works. We're just gonna lower that Fuma 2 Rev B. And don't tighten down all the way. Now that both of those are lined up, we can whiz them up all the way 
Whiz, whiz, whiz. Scythe coolers are pretty good because even with the massive VRM heat sinks and that kind of stuff on the Z690 boards, most of the scythe coolers fit and they clear. Another thing I like about the scythe cooler is when we install the RAM, we don't have any RAM clearance issues at all, right? So this 64 gig kit goes in. Here's something I thought you guys might find interesting, depending on the build and the case and just little observations I make when I'm planning stuff out is the order of the build isn't always the same. For this build in particular, I actually need to put the power supply in before the motherboard because of the air cooler. I probably won't be able to get my hands on top of the motherboard to plug in the EPS power connector. So the way I would do this always is plug the EPS cables in as I'm putting the motherboard in. So we'll go ahead and install this power supply first. Then what I'll do is feed those EPS cables through because when we're ready to put the motherboard in, we should have the provisions. So plug this in before the board goes in and then we screw the motherboard down. It just makes it a little bit easier and we don't have to fluff about with trying to get our hands in there. With that same thought process in mind, now is a good time for us to install the top fans as well. See, not every system is always the same order every time that you build. Sometimes you will need to figure it out before you put stuff in and then build in an order that you're not typically used to seeing or doing. So we plug these EPS power cables into the motherboard first. Beautiful. And that's it. Now we don't have to fluff around with trying to get those other cables plugged in because you won't be able to get in there. It's just not possible. All right, lastly, the GPU goes in. I did all the cable management stuff off camera. It only took like 10 minutes to do that, but I didn't want to bore you with a whole bunch of cable management that you probably don't care about, or maybe you do care, but I can show you guys in a second, but we'll get this GPU in. I'll put this GPU support bracket in as well. It's just like an Aorus one. I have a bunch of these and they're actually kind of the best GPU support bracket because they're magnetic, they stick to the bottom of the case and they're very easy to install. Look at that, installed. Beautiful on the fan. I always just test to see if the fans are spinning. In case you were interested in the cable management, this is what it looks like. It's pretty simple. I used the internal RGB controller for the fans. I actually kind of toyed with the idea of not plugging it in at all, but I mean, for a video, let's give it a little bit of bling. All right, ladies and gents, here we go. First power on. I'm guessing those fans must have come unplugged, which is okay. We'll get around to fixing that, but will it post? It makes me so nervous when it doesn't do anything, but it's probably just doing memory training because it's got 64 gigs of RAM. I actually tested this board the other day as well. Well, over the weekend rather. Yay, look at that, it posted. You can see 12900K, 64 gigs of RAM. The BIOS is quite old, so I will be updating that. Everything should be running no problem now. So I'll get this system up and running and then we'll do some testing. I don't usually show this bit, but I'm doing my Ida 64 tests here. And look, we've got a Binny. She's hanging out while we, we test it. What do you reckon, Binny? Oh, no one wants to see that, mate. <laughs> She's been sitting on the table as I've been getting this system up and running the whole time. <laughs> what are you doing, kiddo? This is just for your guys' entertainment, really. I don't personally care about the temps too much for these tests personally, but I know we'll get questions about it, so I figured, you know what? Let's just show you guys all the temps that we're getting, but I'll actually walk through this part as we do the benchmarking part of the video to talk about all of our results. But yeah, I thought I'd just chuck this in. There's only one real issue that we've got with the system at the moment. And that is with the Z690 Unify, there is no option in the BIOS to enable the iGPU. Now I spoke to MSI about this already. I'm gonna see what they come back with because this is a board that content creators will choose. And I think it's just a little bit odd that there's no option to enable the iGPU. So hopefully they come back with a nice BIOS update and a fix for it. All right, so I've done all the testing on the system. I'll quickly share those benchmarks with you now for Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. Now there's a reason why I didn't run Resolve and After Effects as well. I'm actually gonna run it 
on this system when I do the Threadripper Pro stuff because I want to do them side by side. But these results here are for this motherboard. Now I'm going to talk about this in a sec, but just keep that in mind, right? So there's no iGPU support. I'll talk about that. Keep thinking about it, right? Okay, right? So that's Puget Bench. Now let's take a look at the thermals here. What we're seeing is the thermals aren't actually too bad. They're not excellent by any stretch of the imagination, but 84 degrees for the CPU for this air cooler, in this case with it fully closed up, is actually quite good. And that's over our testing period of one hour with an 18 degree ambient temperature. But now, here's where this PC took a little bit of a turn. I just got off the phone with our guy at MSI and he got in contact with the BIOS team and the motherboard team and basically told us that the Z690 Unify, the reason why there's no option in the BIOS to enable the iGPU so we can use QuickSync is the Unify board, I think he said the Godlike board as well, doesn't have power delivery for the iGPU. So it's not just a BIOS update they can push out. There's physically no power delivery to turn that part of the CPU itself on. I didn't even consider that when I asked them why there's no BIOS option for it, but you know, that's just something to note. I did see people talking about this with Z390, but I thought that maybe because this has got USB Type-C, you could use that as a display output as well, because you know, USB Type-C can do display as well. But turns out it's a hardware level thing. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna swap the board out to this before the next video, I'm not gonna film swapping it out, but this has a display port output or HDMI or whatever. It's got display output on the motherboard. So obviously I'll be able to enable the iGPU for this, but I just thought this was worth mentioning because I feel like the results here for Puget Bench don't tell the whole story as to the full performance of the system. So before I start using this, I'll, I'll do it off camera. I don't think you guys need to see me swapping out a motherboard all over again. But I hope you enjoyed this kind of video where we actually learned something today because it's not often that I will come away from doing a video where I'm like, oh wow, that is the reason for something being the way it is because I've been doing this for such a long time. It sounds really wanky to say, but I've heard it all. But this is something that I didn't even think of. And it's funny because when I spoke to our rep at MSI, he said the same thing. He's like, they hadn't heard of anyone asking about this at all, considering for me personally, I thought the Unify would definitely be a board that content creators would buy because it has no RGB and it's all blacked out. But turns out that once again, one of Nick's weird edge cases pricks the ears up of the motherboard gods and gives us a solution, not one that we want to hear. But I hope you guys learned something from this video too. It was quite an interesting little bitty of info. Maybe you don't care. Who knows? But for the next video with the Third Ripper Pro stuff, I will be running the exact same Premiere Pro benchmark. But for the one where we compare both of the systems, we'll do Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and After Effects as well. Because for me personally, there are three programs that I use. Well, not so much Resolve. Can I just comment? Uh, someone said the other day that they couldn't believe that we didn't use Resolve because we shoot in Blackmagic Raw. You can edit Blackmagic Raw in any NLE. It doesn't have to be Resolve. Anyway, guys, PC part picker list if you're interested. I'll put that in the description down below. And thank you for joining me on this video that didn't quite turn out as I expected. It was fun for me. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button down below. We've got a big channel update coming up really soon. Where I'm gonna talk about the music stuff as well for you guys. And let us know what you think about the new channel intro stinger animation thing. I put that one together yesterday. As well as that guys, if you like these videos and you love this channel, please do us the favor of hitting that subscribe button ringing that notification bell to get notifications and chucking us a like. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek and we seek. Thanks for watching. A lot of hand movements going on today, Claire. Stop it. I can do this one too. Wiki, wiki, wiki.